Hi my friends, welcome again to your channel. Let's discover creating interpolation. The prediction is strong in this one. Sculpt a legendary prediction model with creating. It's time to sculpt ourselves a prediction model of the ages. The prediction is strong in creating. On your journey to creating a fine prediction surface, you'll need to understand some key concepts before even getting into creating. What are these concepts? Read below to get a step-by-step -step core knowledge of creating. Let's start with some basics. To really understand creating, you have to know what interpolation is. As with all interpolation, we are predicting unknown values at other locations. With an interpolation method like inverse distance weighting, you are making predictions without saying how certain you are. Here's an example. We predict the purple point by taking an inverse weighted distance of the closest three input points, the values of 12, 10, and 10, based on the distance. We calculate how far each input point is and get a value of 11.1, 12, 350 plus 10, 750 plus 10, 851, 350 plus 1, 750 plus 1, 850 equals 11.1. This is exactly how deterministic interpolation works. Simply, it uses a predefined function and it is what it is. But it doesn't tell you how sure you are. What is creating interpolation? If a weatherman makes a forecast saying it's going to rain tomorrow, how sure are you that it's going to rain? In other words, instead of only saying here's how much rainfall at specific locations, Creating also tells you the probability of how much rainfall at a specific location. You use your input data to build a mathematical function with a semivariogram. Create a prediction surface and then validate your model with cross-validation. Not only does just statistics provide an optimal prediction surface, but it also delivers a measure of confidence of how likely that prediction would be true. Meanwhile, Creating can generate prediction surfaces and surfaces that describe how well your model breaks. P I E I C D I O N. This surface straight predicts the values of the variable you are creating. Y R O R O F P I D I C T I O N. It depicts the standard error. You get a higher standard of error when there isn't as much input data. Y R O B A B I L I T Y. The probability surface highlights when it exceeds a threshold. Q U A N D I L E. This surface represents the best or worst case scenarios as a 99 the percentile. The key to creating is the semivariogram. Creating relies on the semivariogram. In simple terms, semivariograms quantify autocorrelation because it graphs out the variance of all pairs of data according to distance. Chances are that closer things are more related and have small semivariance, while far things are less related and have a high semivariance. But a certain distance range, autocorrelation becomes independent. Where that variation levels off, it's called so. This means there is no longer any spatial autocorrelation or relationship between the closeness of your data points. This concept is the Tobler's first law of geography. Again, the purpose here is to fit a surface such as a polynomial that models the overall large-scale trend. Then, round that trend, we have variability with residuals where creating comes in. Based on our semivariogram results, you can select the semivariogram that is spherical, circular, exponential, Gaussian, or linear. Alternatively, if you can make an intellectual justification for a mathematical model, then you pick that one. Before you even begin, check your data. Before you even start creating, your data needs to fit these criteria before ordinary creating. Creating is the optimal interpolation technique if your data meets certain criteria. But if they don't meet those criteria, you can associate or choose a different interpolation technique altogether. Your data needs to have a normal distribution. The data needs to be stationary. Your data cannot have any trends. The following steps are ways to check your data to see if they fit these criteria. First, we suggest plotting out your points and symbolizing them from low to high. In our example, 
We use soil moisture samples taken in an, an agriculture one. field. Your data has a normal distribution. While we are not exploring the spatial properties in this test, we are only checking that the values are fairly normally distributed. In other words, do the values of your data fit a bell curve shape? One of the ways to explore this is using a histogram. In RGIS, click Just Statistical Analysis Explore Data Histogram. At this point, you can check the histogram for any outliers and how much it looks like a bell curve. In our case, it looks like it has a fairly good normal distribution. Alternatively, you can check your data with a normal QQ plot. A normal QQ plot compares how your data lines up with normally distributed data. If all points have a perfectly normal distribution, all your points will fall on a 45 beg line. In our case, the data follows a straight line. What if your data doesn't have a normal distribution? In this case, you will have to apply a transformation such as log or arcsin until it becomes normal. Instead of selecting your own transformation, you can do a normal score transformation which pretty much does a lot of the work for you. The normal score transformation is so powerful that it's now the default method of simple crouching in RGIS. We explain this in more detail below. Assumption 2. Your data is stationary. What does it mean that your data has to be stationary? It means that local variation doesn't change in different areas of the map. For example, the data points 5 meters apart in different locations should have similar differences in your measured value. The variance is fairly constant in different areas of the map. Crudging is not optimal for abrupt changes and break lines. You can check your data's stationarity with a Voronoi map symbolizing by entropy variation between neighbors or sandlip deviation and look for randomness. In RGIS, click Just Statistical Analysis Explore Data Voronoi Map. In our case, we do see some small amounts of clustering. Overall, for entropy and sandlip deviation, Voronoi map show a data set is looking adequately stationary. What do you do if your data isn't stationary? Empirical Bayesian crediting EDK can help by treating local variance separately. Instead of variances similar to a whole extent, EDK performs crediting as a separate underlying process in different areas. It still performs crediting, but it is done locally. Assumption 3. Your data doesn't have trends. Trends are systematic changes in data across an entire study area. We can check the trend analysis with the SDA tool. In RGIS, click Just Statistical Analysis Explore Data Trend Analysis. The green line shows the trend in the east-west direction, and the blue line depicts the trend in the north-south direction. Generally, we have higher soil moisture values in the center, but there's not enough of a trend in our data that it needs to be removed. What if your data has systematic trends? Or the having large trends in your entire study area may be a reason to switch to appellation methods altogether. The trend removal tool can assist so the following analysis will not be influenced by that trend in your data. Crouching example in RGIS. After exploring your data for the above criteria, you can click Just Statistical Analysis, Just Statistical Wizard. And now the fun truly begins, said with sarcasm. Step 1. Select the Crudging co -crudging. Now that you have the Just Statistical Wizard open, Crudging is under the Just Statistical Methods. As mentioned earlier, this is because you build your optimal prediction surface with a semivariogram and can estimate a measure of confidence of how likely that prediction will be true. Notice how if you select a single input, it's simply Crudging. But when you add a second variable, it suddenly becomes co -crudging. If you have two or more variables that are related to how precipitation changes in mountain areas, then you can add elevation data as a covariate to rainfall amounts. In this case, you can improve a prediction with secondary information. Step 2. Choose the crouching type. Now, let's take a step back for a second to understand what all the options mean. There's quite a bit to absorb in this step. 
Ordinary crating was the default in RG IS 10.0. Now, because of normal score transformation, simple crating is the default. In particular, simple crating uses a normal score transformation, transforming your data into standard normal distribution. As mentioned earlier, this is one of the essential criteria to perform grading. For basic users, your best option is taking the simple grading approach. But other more complicated grading types exist. UIV, IS, ALK, or IGING combines trend surface analysis drift with ordinary grading by counting for trends. INDIC, the OK, or IGING carries through ordinary grading with binary data zero and one such as urban and non-urban cells. Pure OBABILITYK or IDING uses binary data similar to indicator grading estimates unknown points for a series of cutoffs. Lastly, you can manually set your transformation type and trend removal in this step. For example, if you want to change your transformation to log, this is when you can make this change. Step 3. Model data with a semivariate run. In this example, we use ordinary crating for demonstration purposes. The just statistical wizard generates a semivariogram with blue crosses showing the average variation for each pair of points. The lag size is the size of a distance class into which pairs of locations are grouped. As a rule of thumb, you can multiply the lag size by the number of lags for it to equal half of the largest distance among all points. If your points aren't clustered, you can run the average nearest neighbor tool which tells you the average distance between points. ArcMap has added the functionality to optimize all these parameters for you. When you click the Optimize button, it will find the value for each parameter that results in the smallest root mean square error. That would be out of trial and error for the user to best each scenario. Ultimately, it's usually best to go with some error model that the software thinks is best. For our study area, here is what the semi area gram looks like. Step 4. Map the model with critting weight. After you are satisfied with your fitted semi area gram, the wizard gives a preview surface with even more parameters to customize the output. What critting does is predict responses at each location using a weighted average with nearest neighbors. But first, you have to set the number of points maximum and minimum to use in your search radius. Despite so much talk on how important some of their grams matter in grading, this step influences the output of your map immensely. If you change any of these parameters, it can really alter the look and feel of the surface. If you select one of the slice sector types, this ensures that there will be points included to estimate in each one of those slices. For example, if you use a precise pie and set your neighbors to 5, then each slice will use 5 points a total of 20 for local estimates. As there is no perfect set formula, the key is to pan around and check predicted values for how you feel the output should look like. Step 5. Check cross-validation results. The cross-validation step for credging takes one of your input data points and throws it out of the data set. Using all the remaining points, it runs the prediction back to that location. Again, you know what the true value is. This process uses all remaining to predict that value. For cross-validation, it iterates through all of your input points until it's complete. Then, it creates this summary table of residuals comparing actual versus your model's predicted values. What this table shows is how robust your model really is. So how close are true values to predictive values? In other words, how well does your model fit the data? To put this all in perspective, check your root mean square standardize, as it should be close to 1. In addition, the root mean square error should be as small as possible. The dynamic just statistical layer. Because the output is a just statistical layer, it's dynamic, meaning you can change its output type as prediction. Errors of prediction, probability, or quanto. Or you can even go back into the just statistical layer and change the parameters if you don't like the optimized output. There's a science, an art to grading. 
It's not only how you pick your model from the semiveriogram, but also how you set up the number of bins and other settings. This is the art of credging. When you represent your credging surface, such as choosing the number of intervals, it can give a different impression on the results. While more classes gives more detail, the data classification method such as quantile or equal interval arranges your data differently. The prediction is strong in credging. Spatial prediction involves some component of randomness. This is crucial with just statistics when you're making inferences on a data set. Your credging weights are estimated from the variable. More specifically, it's derived from the model you choose. The quality of the estimated surface is reflected in the quality of the weights. You want weights that get an unbiased prediction and the smallest variance. In other words, Credging finds the spatial pattern. It then predicts our known values based on its spatial pattern. With these predictions, credging generates a measure of error or uncertainty. This means that you can estimate confidence in the prediction surface they are true not because of random charts. Because not only do you customize your mathematical function to build one, but you also use the power of statistical analysis, namely the semivariate Cridging is a justistics method that predicts the value in a geographic area given a set of measurements. It's used in mining, soil, geology, and environment science. This single cookie cutter methodology works for everyone, as it relates to your data. Only you can decide what those settings are and how best to generate a prediction surface. Jungle. Thank you.